Welcome back to Creepcast. How you doing? How you doing? Isaiah, how are you today? I'm doing very good. I feel honored that you did the Papa Meat how you doing thing. I kind of missed that. I know I bit. fucked up. No, no, yeah. no. I kind of no, I, I like it because when I watch Papa Meat, I'm like, oh, he doesn't do that for me. But now I feel special. <laughs> I don't I don't want to mix the mix the waves too much. I, I get in uh record mode and I just I start just saying uh, all the random stuff I say verbatim, so that's cute. That's cute. You have little catchphrases and stuff. I think people just just get such a tickle out of it. Yeah, of course. That's a word for it. Yeah. So ever, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank you so much for stopping by the show. It means the most. Thank you all so much for the support that you showed on Creep TV. Um, was it brave of us to take our already successful podcast and push it in a direction we knew would be successful? It was actually. So uh, we're I think it's incredibly brave. That. Yeah, it, it was very brave of us. And we're actually um, veterans, if you think about it, like the same level of um, commitment and bravery, at least as you told me before we started recording. So I, I, I'm glad that people recognize that, our braveness. Hey, everybody. I, hey, everybody. We want to let you know that we have merch now. We have an awesome shirt. This is what it looks like. <laughs> but on the back, it has the spider that goes down to your ass crack it's very good and I, I i could confirm that you'll make tons of friends when you buy this shirt and not only do we have the shirts we have something else take it away isaiah in in addition to the t-shirt you can also get this really cool hat not only does it have a raised font that says creep cast and these cool spider webs but it also has like ripping across the bill and the hat itself to make it look like this old weathered tattered thing and it even has the cool spider there so it matches your shirt if you want to wear them together but most importantly by getting the hat you'll be supporting small independent creators like myself and definitely not hunter so be sure to click the link in the description or in the comment section or wherever we pasted it or go to creepcast.com or whatever the actual website is put that over what i'm saying go to creepcast.store and buy your bundle today you do save money when you buy them both Steal your mom's credit card and steal your mom and your dad's credit card. You can get in on the hat and t-shirt at the link below. They'll only be available for a very limited amount of time and then they're gone forever. So get in on them while you can. And thank you all so much for the support that you've shown the show. The last day you can buy this is July 21st and then it's going to be gone off our website. So you have until then. Stop asking us to make merch. We've, we've done it finally. All right, back to the episode. <laughs> But without further ado, let's get into today's episode, which we are talking about. My wife has been peeking at me from around corners and behind furniture. It's gone from weird to terrifying. People have uh, requested this before, and I want I want to say right now, one of my favorite uh, titles of a story we've, we we are getting ready to cover so far. Love the title. The title's pretty cool. I'll admit I'm a little skeptical, mainly because the mm. audience suggested this one, and uh, well. their track record has been questionable. We've um, been burned. We have been burned a lot. And you know what? For the record, I enjoyed Tommy Taffy, um, but that was your all's fault. Any problems you have with it? Look in the mirror. That's who did it. Um, but like there's a lot of creepy pasta, especially like R slash no sleep that have a title. That's a question like that. We've covered a few, right? My dead girlfriend keeps mm -hmm. messaging me on Facebook. The thing in the basement's getting better at mimicking people, stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? And it can be hit or miss. Now, I, I'm with you. I think the title's great. I think it's a good hook. I am very excited for the potential. But the fact the audience suggested it makes me nauseous. Um, but we'll see if they're worthy of being called our fans. It's true. Well, I yeah. and I, I shared some of that rage with you as well. I punched four holes in my wall just because yeah. I read the comments once. So I, there's right. a plethora yeah. of walls. It looks like a looks like a goddamn beehive in my room right now with the amount of holes and caverns there are, but I, I I'm excited. I, I also, as we've said before, I really enjoy whenever the names of the stories also really heavily play into the social media post aspect to it. Yes. Yeah. I do. I do think that's, that's pretty cool. Cause like we've talked about before, the whole premise of our slash no sleep is it has to be conducted in a way that makes sense for it to wind up on no sleep. Right. Yeah. Um, yep. so like some of them kind of try to hide it. Like, like they'll kind of fit it in at the end, like the left right game, for example, the very end, it's like, I'm sending this as my final message, you know, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, or the guy, the framing device, her friends who posted it online is the one who received the email. And there's others right. like this or my dead girlfriend that just full bore starts with like, 
hey guys, I know this is a subreddit. I, I'm going through this. And you can do cool stuff with it when you kind of embrace the format. So again, we'll see how it goes. The immersion is beautiful. Well, I say without further ado, this is also by Malia Girl 1314 So uh, I say let's just dive in. Let's go ahead and dive in. There is one thing I want to get off my chest before we start, though, that mostly I feel like you, you'd appreciate. I was in the city uh, this weekend and some girl runs up to me and she was like, oh, oh my gosh, are you that guy from Creepcast? Not Wendigo. That is nice. Not Isaiah. That guy from Creepcast. That guy. <laughs> That guy. You're the guy who does the Jeff Goldblum impression, yeah. right? You, yes, yes, yes. Now, if she said that, I would have been thrilled. I've been like, that would have been fucked up. That, uh, I would have actually quit the part. I would have been like, okay, I'm done. I'm actually done. I would have been like, that's right. <laughs> and that's right. Uh, uh, that's me. And, uh, that's me. No, she wouldn't know that because the editor keeps cutting it. The Creep TV was the most, the most the Jeff Goldblum impression got out because Caitlin wasn't allowed to touch it. <laughs> she didn't well, get you know what I say? I say on it. Enjoy it while you could because it's the last time. Okay. All right, let's get into okay. it. Here we go. My wife has been peeking at me from around corners and behind furniture. It's gone from weird to terrifying. Terrifying. My wife, Lynn, and I have been together for six years and married for 11 months. Our entire history together has been very normal and never once have I noticed any weird behaviors or red flags. I can't stress enough how out of character this whole thing is for her. Okay, hold on. I'm... I'm I'm already surprised. I w okay from the title. I fully expected the beginning to be like, "Oh, my wife's dead, right?" And now her ghost is. Oh, in really? The house. See, so, I was yeah. thinking. I I was thinking this was going to be the tra trajectory, of like, I oh man, we've been it just some for some reason at this time she's just it like a, a switch has happened. And then we get to dive into that. that I, I, I'm surprised. So you thought that, did you think this was going to be a ghost story? I thought it was going to be like a ghost story or something. Yeah. Oh, or, or maybe okay. like, maybe not ghost necessarily, maybe like skinwalker kind of thing. Like, you know, she disappeared. Well, that's what I'm expecting. Comes in the house. I, I, I'm expecting it's like the, the, the switches. She's like, oh, whatever. And then it's maybe something where I don't know if she has been murdered and someone has replaced her. Like, she, like she is in a physical state still. Maybe it's kind of like my bias for the way the title was formatted. I talked about it sure. earlier. I was kind of expecting a my dead girlfriend keeps messaging me kind of it story. It does have you. No, you're right. It it does have that kind of ring to it. But I but I, I emphasize that to say already I'm like oh okay a little, little, little curveball. Let's, let's see what you have. Okay. Ah, boy, oh boy, when I sit baking under these lights recording this creepy little podcast for you, I smell like shit, and I think, I bet my listeners smell like shit too. Each and every single one of you. Which is why I have a couple fragrances that I'm stoked to talk to you about today. Starting off with Dirty Hinoki by Heretic. The scent of the Hinoki cypress and cedar are known to alleviate anxiety, and I thought it would give a good overall calming effect to anyone I spray it on. Another fragrance I wanted to try was Amour Café by Mazier Paris. I'm not a big coffee drinker, but the smell of coffee only always gets my tingling. And the scent has notes of espresso, vanilla cream, and brown sugar, making it the ultimate sweet treat. Yum! Next up is vanilla and bourbon by Scents of Wood. Spraying this in the air is like being dipped into a big old bowl of vanilla ice cream. Under the covers are hints of cardamom oil and cinnamon bar. Last of the bunch is Antihero by Kuatrix. Now that's cool. This fragrance might be my favorite one. It smells like stumbling out an alley of a speakeasy in the best kind of way. It has notes of rum, praline, apple, and saffron. And all of these scents, guess what? They're from Scentbird! For less than $17 a month, you can try different brands and scents in order to find out which one you like. And all of the vials come with a 30-day supply! And Scentbird carries a wide range of brands including Prada, Versace, and Roja. Avoid the disappointment and stop wasting money on bottles you might end up disliking. If you're interested in trying Scentbird, use our code CREEP or click the link below to get 55% off your colognes and fragrances at Scentbird. That's code Creep the checkout to get 55% off your first month. Thank you so much to Simper for sponsoring this episode. And hey, back to the episode, you smelly. F Lynn is very kind, intelligent, and thoughtful. She's always been the no nonsense type of person. Being childish or trying to scare me is not something she'd normally do. She doesn't even like watching horror movies. Lame. Gosh, you married this girl. Yeah, I know. What the fuck are you thinking, dude? I'm a loser. Yeah, she's kind and thoughtful. Can't be too kind or thoughtful. You know, with that we need kind of to thing. roll back out that girl from uh, Pin Pal, who I was like, oh yeah, way too with. into. Who I, yeah. and then I realized she was a teenager, and I backed off. You know, whatever her name was, <laughs> that would have been a better option. 
When we first started dating, she agreed to watch The Shining with me because she knew how much I loved horror. She was so scared that she didn't even make it through half of the movie before we had to turn it off. Okay, I'm go- I'll stop. I'll stop breaking every paragraph, but The Shining halfway? What happens halfway through The Shining that you would turn it off? Jack Nicholson's hairline. That You know what? Actually, that's fair. All right, continuing. She isn't into anything creepy and has never been into pranks. It's just not her cup of tea, and that's fine. But that's what was so strange about this. It's just so unlike her. I should also add that she never had any mental health issues, and as far as I'm aware, it doesn't run in her family. I know some people are able to hide their mental health problems, but in the six years we've been together, I think I had seen some sort of sign. I love this these buildups with these stories, too, where it's just like... He, the author has not said anything specifically about what has happened, but it's been so many things like, well, she never used to scare me. I also want to say that she has never been mentally deranged at all. So it's just like slowly building these pieces without ever actually being like, this is what she's doing. It feels like a guy actually coming to the board for help, you know? So if, yeah. you, if you like pretend like it's not r slash no sleep, it's like, yeah, this is formatted like a guy who's like, I, I, something's up with my wife. Does anyone have any advice with this? You know, something like that. Like I said, mm-hmm. it embraces the format, right? Right. Two months ago, I was in the kitchen making myself some coffee before work. I was running a bit late that morning and knew I wouldn't be able to make it to Dunkin Donuts for my usual morning fix. I took a sip of my coffee as I hurried down the hall towards the front door when I happened to notice Lynn peeking at me from around the corner ahead of me. (laughs) I could only see her eyes and a strand of her long, dark hair hanging against the wall. The rest of her body was concealed behind the corner. I nearly spilled my coffee when I saw her. I did burn the shit out of my lips. Jeez, Lynn! (laughs) I said, wiping a few drops of coffee from my pants. You scared the shit out of me! She immediately popped out of view like a little kid that had been caught. I heard her scurry off towards the living room, and by the time I got to the front door, she was out of sight. I'm definitely picturing her peeking, and you can tell she's smiling. Like, yeah. I bet you her eyes are, eyebrows are raised, you know? Man, I'm already, okay, I'm in, you know? Because, like... It's just so weird, too. There's so, It's, like, not... It, it's obviously strange. It's not that she's even threatening, because, yeah, if I first saw this, I'd be like, what do you, What the hell are you even doing? And then just... And then she, like, runs yeah. off because yeah. she got caught. It's there's nothing threatening. It's just so surreal and odd that a grown woman would do that, that it does make it creepy. Yeah, it's like so out of character. Like, imagine your wife doing that kind of thing, you know? Or oh, like, that would. Yeah, no. Would that, have, I would be like, I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I would be like, oh, no, come back here. What was that? <laughs> Explain yeah, like, what that don't was. Don't run yeah. off like a toddler. Yeah, don't what? Like, I'm imagining like my wife doing that. Like, if I was walking through the house and it was like just an eye of hers i'd be like no 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 yeah. no, no. Okay. Uh, we're not going to bed until we talk about that <laughs> yeah there's no way i'd be like yeah especially can you imagine like l- living on the the day normally after that like we're like brushing our teeth at night i'd be like no seriously what the fuck were you doing earlier <laughs> it's, just, it's just a prank i'm like well don't do that no <laughs> yes. more it's like no uh, moss. what i'm sorry are you a child <laughs> are you yeah, like- exactly were you a fucking jester <laughs> going to get you a hat with some bells on it, you freak. That's what I'd say. <laughs> Put a collar on her. Like, wait, well, that sounded weird, but you know what I meant. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, I, I oh, lost my it. I, my bad. Okay, take it back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> immediately, I dumped out of that one. But no, it's like, it is uncanny. It's like an odd... It's creepy. It's It's creepy enough, you know? Yeah. It was really weird and just totally out of character for her, like I said, but I also found it kind of funny that she was being more playful and a little less serious. I shouted that I loved her and called her a weirdo. As I shut the door behind me, I heard her laughing. Oh, I don't like that. Even from him, I don't... That that, that whole interaction was... I love you, you fucking freak! <laughs> and you just hear, <laughs> behind the door? <laughs> like, like, what can you get? The, I bet dinner parties at their house are unbearable. Hey, we're th- throwing on the football game tomorrow night. I'm like, no, no, I'm good. Hey, babe. Hey, you freak up in my attic. They just got a touchdown. She makes the best pork roast, doesn't she, guys? It's like she's like hanging from the ceiling like a spider. Yeah, she's like Chris scampering <laughs> across the walls. <laughs> 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 Isn't her guacamole delicious? Oh man, it's a delightful. She's like, she's like, you just hear Latin coming from. She's not speaking it, but there's Latin coming from her. <laughs> <laughs> her behavior was a bit odd, but it certainly wasn't something to call a priest over. 
I forgot about it by lunch, and by the time I got home, she was her normal self. I didn't bring it up, and neither did she, and life went on. The next incident happened three days later. It was around 2 a.m., and I had woken up to get a drink. I was standing at the kitchen island, jug of OJ in hand, when I felt a strong feeling that I was being watched. For whatever reason, I looked down at the floor and saw my wife's smiling face staring back. She was peeking at me from the other side of the island, staring up at me with wide, unblinking eyes and grinning. Grinning like the Cheshire cat. I screamed, I'll admit it. Not out of irritation, but fear. For some reason at that moment, I was scared. At the sound of my scream, Lynn scuttled backwards out of my... (laughs) Scuttled? I do not like the word scuttled being applied. (laughs) Yeah, dude, no, 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 no. She's like vibrating backwards really quick. Like, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Her hands and feet smacking the tile floor. Oh, I don't, I don't like that either. Her hands and feet oh smacking the tile floor was she a goddamn duck? <laughs> now, now imagine that she's like running away like a duck, like she's just like like feet pointed straight just like out, wobbling side to side. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> to the ground. That gets me in like horror films when it's like dark, but you hear like the like the running, you know, getting quicker. Okay. See, I didn't. See, I didn't have the visual of you doing that, so I didn't know what that clapping was. The uh, the uh, <laughs> for the collar, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The uh, I will say the new context of this being at two a.m. makes the one during the day like you could easily see that being played off. But at two a.m., I'd be like, it would be. It takes on such a whole new entity. Yeah, I mean, like my wife's like pranked me before. You know, like oh yeah, put something scary somewhere. So maybe you could write it off as that, but I would I would ask her about it. If it's super uncharacteristic, though, it just feels even more yeah, odd. You know, it's you like, know it's uncharacteristic. Where the fuck did she it? pick this up? You know, it's uncharacteristic. But I mean, we've only seen one instance, so maybe it happens here. But there's no alleviation after the scare, right? Mm-hmm. Like if some if your friend scares you and you scream, usually laugh, there's like the ha ha, you know, whatever. I got yeah, you. Yeah, well, you got me. But blah, if blah. that never happens, then there's like a there's like just a strange tension, you know? Yeah, that's kind of it's kind of the vibe I get. Scuttled on my view, t- smacking the tile floor. Wait, oh, whoa, hold on. Her hands and feet smacking the tile floor as she hurried out of the kitchen on all fours. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, didn't dude. Get, I didn't get that far. She's running around the house. It's like, I should have never taken her to say Planet of the Apes. On all fours? I was On making a fours. joke about the Latin spider running across the wall. I'm telling you, dude. She's like a goddamn beetle walk around. Yeah, no, there's no way. <laughs> she's like, she's like six inches off the floor, her whole body parallel, and her arms and legs are bent at like the knees and elbows. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm expecting. What the heck? I didn't run after her or even yell after her. I just stood there frozen in shock, wondering what had possessed her to do that. It took me a little longer than I'd like to admit to go back upstairs, but I eventually did. When I got to our bedroom, Lynn was lying on her side, asleep. I would wake her up. (laughs) I'd be like, no, 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 we're talking about this. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. (laughs) Oh, I don't want to wake her. Like hell. I'd I'd fucking turn on, flip on the lights and slam the door. Hey, that's what I'd say. (laughs) Wake up. (laughs) My prediction is that there's another entity in the house that looks like his wife. Oh, see, I'm I'm still I, my if I was a betting man, I still think that his wife is gone and something has taken its place. Is that's what, is yeah, what that's, I think. That's possible. I'm assuming in between, though, there's like a lot of like normal time. I, at first, I'm imagining. I think it's a, it's going to be a slow transition, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or at least pretending to be asleep. I stood there for a while watching her breathing to be sure she was really asleep. I had the feeling she might jump out at me the moment I got into bed, but she didn't. Climbed into bed, and she didn't even move. Her breathing was soft and deep, and I was starting to wonder if I would dreamt the whole thing. The next morning, I waited for her to come down for coffee, and after handing her a mug and kissing her cheek, I decided to ask her about it. What was that about last night? I asked, keeping my tone light so I didn't offend or embarrass her. She frowned over her cup of coffee, shaking her head like she had no clue what I was referring to. You were peeking at me again from over there, I said, pointing to the spot on the floor by the kitchen island. She followed my gaze, and when she looked back at me, she burst out laughing. She laughed so hard, I couldn't help but join her. You creep me the fuck out sometimes, you know that? She giggled and set her cup on the counter and wrapped her arms around my neck. You creep me out all the time, so I guess we're even. 
What? That was a weird interaction. This is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that this is just a fucking socially weird ass couple, dude. I've known some people like this. <laughs> These are just some weird people. <laughs> yeah, like where it's just like a guy's just like, yeah. I mean, my favorite thing to do is play Settlers of Catan and watch the old gargoyle <laughs> show on Disney XD. And she likes to crochet and eat pears. And you're like, what kind of fucking what world are you in, Your dude? Examples are always so hyper specific. <laughs> you know I someone from- <laughs> who plays Settlers of Catan and watches gargoyles on Disney? <laughs> yes. XD. <laughs> His girlfriend would crochet the whole time and she'd eat raw pears. It was so fucking <laughs> odd. What? It was unbelievable. Wait, this is a I'm real telling you. You're describing yes, it's it's uh, it's and I'm like it, it makes sense to where it's like <laughs> then I, I'm reading this and, and I <laughs> was this like, a bug family you were talking that's, to? I, I don't know. All I know is it, when I read these things, I'm like, it is. this is not out of the realm of reality of a guy being like, just having these kind of awkward interactions and stuff. I don't know. I, there I, are a it, bunch it, of people I know who are like strange, you know, socially. And I'm like, what are they like at home? You know? Yeah. Like, like no, what, I mean, what's their day to day conversations? Yeah. Also, I just want to say, too, just looking back at her quote, was you creep me out all the time, so I guess we're even. This, reading that back, it feels like she didn't respond to anything besides there. Do you think that's like, a, I mean, it doesn't feel like a human interaction, really. It just feels kind of weird. Like, I don't know. You creep it, me it out all the like time, a, so I guess. It kind of sounds like she's still not acknowledging what he's talking about. Well, that's what I mean. Is she's He's like, what is that? Because sure, she laughed, but to me, I read it kind of like she's fucking weird as hell, a creepy eating pears and doing whatever the heck she has to do. But I think like more so wouldn't you be like, I know I've just been messing with you. Like you would like have a trail on sentence to that. And then her, it's like, even it's, it's even kind of a threat to or her being like, you creep me out all the time. It's kind of insulting. The closest thing I could think of is if like Kayla was pranking me and I was like, what's that about? She'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like she would keep the game going, but like the whole, yeah, like, you yeah. creep me out all the time, like almost making it like a, rom- a like a cutesy romantic moment, you know, that's well, it's a backhanded, it's a backhanded, like compliment kind of thing, or it's like, it's supposed to be a cutesy insult yeah. but to me. I'm like, oh, to where in the moment you'd be like, oh, okay, it's normal. But I feel like on my drive, it would eat at me all day. <laughs> I, my wife would get some. Some very inquisitive text. Like, what the fuck did you mean by that? Yeah, what were you talking about? No, that's so funny. The pear <laughs> thing is so good. She's just eating pears. <laughs> this sounds like this sounds like a eats dry spaghetti kind of person, right? Like from the just opens a box, eats the dry noodles. You know? Oh, dude, that kind dude. of thing. Yeah. Ch- ch- chews on dry noodles like chips. Yeah. And then cooks it and doesn't use like pasta sauce, but ketchup. Yes. And like, oh my gosh. I mean, it's tomato. I mean, it's tomatoes. It's all the same thing. You can't taste the difference. Yeah, those freaks. Yeah, those. Yeah, horrible they play Sellers of Catan, the, of Catan, the yeah. biggest horror of all. <laughs> Do you need to talk about it? <laughs> no, no, no. no. Okay, I, right. no. <laughs> okay. We said our goodbyes and left for work. As I drove, I kept thinking about how creepy it had been seeing her grinning at me from behind the island like that. The sounds her hands made on the floor as she crawled away. See, see, like that? That takes me out mm-hmm. of it. My wife I'm has never you, crawled in my I'm presence. I'm telling you, there, you would be, there would be some inquisitive text I would have to send. Yeah, like what the heck? I told myself she was tr- just trying to be silly. Just trying to join me in my love of all things horror. It's not like I was afraid of her, but it still didn't sit right with me. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe this can confine in the realms of just like a weird couple. But I, I, that's how I'm reading it. Just kind of an oddball couple. Yeah. I started seeing her peeking at me more and more. Sometimes she'd be peeking out from behind the couch or living room curtains. Once she even managed to get inside her grandmother's old trunk that sits at the foot of our bed. I might not have even known she was there at all had the trunk's old hinges, hinges not given her away. Hey, babe, could you get out of the trunk, please? <laughs> Imagine you're going to bed tonight. You're like in your boxers and t-shirt and you walk out of bed and your wife is just Yeah, you're like box. scratching your balls. You're farting and all kinds of stuff. And then like my, my wife is just in the foot of my bed in the smallest <laughs> Bulvarian trunk of all time. And I'm like, how the hell can did you, you even get babe, in there? Can you please <laughs> come can you to get bed? out of the trunk, please? I'm I'm going to have an affair just to make you do something else. <laughs> Just to make you mad. I don't want to, but <laughs> I need to feel something else I besides need to fear. Feel something. I I am I'm constantly afraid in this house. <laughs> Keep looking at me like a freak. Well, she hasn't gone to work in four months because she just sits in the trunk all day. 
<laughs> you bring like her parents over. They're like, sweetie, you want to come out? She's just like looking yeah. at you like an eye. <laughs> yeah, we have to bring the family therapist over. It's like this old German guy. He's like, time to get out of the pe- get out of the trunk. Yeah, come to me, Lynn. Come. That's what he says. Did this family, did the pair family, have a German <laughs> therapist? <Is> that-, <laughs> that I don't know. Okay. That what that was your first abstraction. Yeah, that <laughs> was that the first scenario. piece of fiction to that story. Okay. By the way, she, she had the lip propped up just enough so that only half of her face peeked through. She'd been grinning like an excited toddler. It was unnerving. I didn't even know what to say to her. All I could do was stare. When I finally found my voice, I asked her why on earth she was doing this. She didn't answer, but she had slowly closed the lid. Sh- <laughs> Oh, dude. <laughs> Can we talk about this like adults? <laughs> she, she, hold on, let me read the sentence. She didn't answer, but she had slowly closed the lid, shutting herself inside the trunk. I just walked away feeling disturbed. Imagine that you walk out, you're like, babe, can you can we go to bed? And she just like slowly <laughs> sets the trunk and you're like, <sighs> I guess I'm watching Family Guy reruns. I guess I'm sitting on the couch. Oh, look, Family Matters is on reruns. I guess I'll let the, yeah. leave that on. <laughs> Con- Cosby shows on. I feel awkward about that, but I guess I'm watching it. Um, <laughs> I didn't understand why she was doing it, but it clearly made her happy. I just hoped she would tire out of the game quickly. Let it peek at me for the next two weeks. I started to think she was done with her weird prank, and I was relieved. We were watching a show on Netflix one night, and I jokingly said that I hadn't seen her peeking at me lately, and that she must have given up on her spy game. She looked up at me with a small smile and said, Maybe I've just gotten better at it. Oh, I don't... That's a great line. I I didn't like that. That's that's a great line. That's fucking creepy. You know know why that fucked me up, though, too? Is because my fat ass is thinking about, like, me chuck, like, scarfing down some chocolate cake at night and not realizing that my wife is just watching me devour like a piece of like triple chocolate cake. And I'm like, did you see that? Did you see me eat the triple chocolate cake? Baby? I mean, it's like, Please. Uh, no, sorry, go ahead. Finish your bed. No, that's it. No, that's it. <laughs> I, didn't mean to, I didn't mean to cut you off through the bed. It's like, no, it's fine. There's like this sacredness to your house, right? You know, that like when, when you're up at like two in the morning walking around and stuff like that, like, you know, you're in your own world. Who cares? But, it's it's weird to think that the person kind of invading that privacy would be like the one person you share it with, you know, because there's yeah. not there's not any other scenarios I can think of where like my wife would feel like an intruder, you know? Yeah. Except well, it's for the this. person you're supposed to trust more than anyone else on Earth. Exactly. Yeah. But if she yeah. was like refusing to talk about how she would spy on me for long periods of time and I couldn't see her like, dude. Well, it's just too, it's just weird. That's good. It's like, well, that's, you, that's, you, you, I haven't heard, you know, I can't think of a time because every like, oh, my wife is scary horror story I know is about like possession or, you know, demonic stuff like that, whatever. This one's just kind of eerie. I like it. I didn't say anything, but I wondered whether or not she was joking. For the next few days, I couldn't stop thinking about what she'd said. Was she still peeking at me when I wasn't looking and I just hadn't noticed? And if so, what the hell was she getting out of this? I started to feel paranoid, constantly checking whether she was watching from around the corner or behind a door. I was jumpy whenever I was home and she wasn't in in full view of me. I felt stupid and a little crazy. But after a few weeks without another incident, I began to relax. I stopped checking behind furniture and walls and told myself it was just a bad memory. Then a few days ago, things got much worse. Lynn left to go to a friend's, and I lounged on the couch and played a couple games on my laptop. Around 9 p.m., I hopped in the shower as I was washing the soap from my hair. uh, Man, okay, I'm getting chills now. Yeah, imagine, because it's your wife, bro, you know? Like, it's supposed to be just positive feeling. Well... One thing that's kind of interesting about the instinctual my wife feeling of like the- when I'm recording these episodes, <laughs> 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 that but the uh, the instinctual feeling of like 
knowing that someone is watching you is such a weird human trait to have. But for the idea of it to feel so foreign from someone that you're supposed to trust so much is just really interesting. Yeah. Because I feel like I've had feelings like, oh, I can tell him my, I, like, you, you can, it's like different presence. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, whenever you feel like a stranger's looking at you, like, and you have that feeling is different than when you feel like your wife is maybe looking at you. Yeah. So I'm just, yeah. I feel like his body is even picking up on, like, oh, I feel like, like some kind of stranger is looking at me right now. Yeah. Yeah. There's been a lot. So it's like that primal thing, right? Of like, someone's looking at me. Someone's looking at me. Yeah. Um, but you, you like, don't get that with your wife or, you know, the person you live with or whatever, but to like, yeah, like you said, like to pick up, it's almost like you relearn that fear of them. You know, mm -hmm. that's interesting. I was in the shower. I felt that awful feeling that I was being watched I slowly opened my eyes and almost had a heart attack. Lynn was peeking from behind the shower curtain. Her entire head stretched into the shower, leaving just her body outside. Her long, dark hair hung against the curtain, the end stripping with water. Her mouth hung open in a terrible grin, eyes wide and red as if she hadn't blinked in a while. <laughs> I screamed and jumped back against the wall. She didn't move, nor did she smile, nor did her smile waver. Her makeup ran down her cheeks in two black streaks. She looked giddy and completely deranged. I was terrified. Oh, Oof, that's man. awesome. That's really good. <laughs> and that's good. Her eyes, like she won't blink. She's just wanting to look at you. We stood like that for a few moments, neither of us saying a word. Finally, after what felt like forever, she slowly pulled her head back out of the shower and I watched her blurry figure through the curtain as she moved backwards towards the bathroom door. A second later, the bathroom door slammed shut, hard enough to rattle the mirror. I screamed again and jumped out of the shower to lock the door. I stayed inside the bathroom for over an hour. Maybe I overreacted to some of you, but joke or not, I wasn't going to put up with this crazy shit anymore. That's what I kept telling myself as I paced in my bathroom, stopping to listen at the door every few minutes. Suddenly, I heard a muffled sound and I pressed my ear against the bathroom door, straining to listen. I couldn't hear anything, but I envisioned Lynn standing on the other side of the door, giggling at her joke. I felt a surge of anger. I was beyond pissed at being made to feel scared in my own house and made to hide in the bathroom for an hour. All for what? Some joke? If it was a joke, it was an awful one. What the fuck, Lynn? This shit's getting really fucking annoying. I waited for her to apologize or to call me a jerk, but instead I heard a faint moan. So quiet, I wondered if I heard it at all, and then complete silence. Lynn? I called out, not able to even hide the shakiness in my voice. I got no response, just my own heavy breathing. I swear to God, just, just fucking stop it! I yelled, pounding my fist on the door. I waited for her to cuss me out. Something I would expect from me talking to her like that. I never screamed at her before. But there was nothing. Just the occasional drip from the shower head. I won't deny that I was scared. Too afraid to open the damn door and face my own wife. I waited another 30 minutes or so, which feels like a lifetime when you're scared. Finally, I decided I wasn't going to spend the night hiding in my bathroom, so I got down on my knees and peered under the door. I almost expected to see her face peeking back at me, but thankfully, I didn't. I could see straight down the hallway to the top of the stairs, but no Lynn. I didn't know if I should be happy about that or not. I looked for a few minutes, waiting to see her head pop up over the top step, but it never came. Man. Ugh. Oh, what an awful idea. What an awful visual. I stood up, my hand hovering over the door, and mentally prepared myself to open it. I slowly turned the lock with shaky fingers. I was about to yank it open when I heard a sound. It still makes me feel nauseous when I think about it. A moan louder than before, but this time I was able to tell just where it was coming from. I turned my head to the closet door, ooh, as if in slow motion, and locked eyes with my wife, who was peeking out from the slight gap. Her eyes were still wide as ever, and her mouth was hanging open in the most grotesque, gaping smile I'd ever seen. I didn't even scream. I was too scared for even that. Her hands were clasped to her chest, body trembling with sheer delight 
as if she could barely contain her excitement. A short, raspy moan bubbled up from her throat, deep and raw, sending a shiver through my entire body. How do you imagine the moan sounding? Uh, you can't hear it, but the, they can. Uh, I'm doing the no, I can hear that. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, kind of like, uh, like a death uh, rattle kind of noise almost, you know? Uh, well, imagine if you're smiling, it's like... Uh, 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 uh. Oh, like yeah, know. yeah. Like you're so eager with the excitement. You're like trying to hold in a scream almost, you know? Yeah. Like, almost uh, like it's like the kind of like short yeah. burst of air you get from uh, trying to hold in your laughter almost. I'm just yeah, trying to like a, picture my head because this is, there's so much, I'm so glued to the story. I haven't like even been wanting to talk. It's, it's been so good, but I'm trying to get in my mind's I'm having a hard time figuring out what the short raspy. I, I think what it is, her, is she like <laughs> visibly like her <laughs> eyes are red because she's holding them open. Her yeah, mouth is huge. Dry. She has her hands clasped up to her chest, like not across her chest, but like like a kid who's like excited to go somewhere and has like his yeah. like fist up and he's like bouncing, you know? Yeah, and I imagine almost the like they're wearing like, a backpack or something. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I imagine the moan to be like kind of like a little eek, you know, like ee, like you know, yeah, like a, like a very like little high pitch frequency with it. Yeah, yeah, like a, the the little bit of the the big bubbling rasping, like the bubble that's coming up from her throat is carrying in just like a very low bit of wind coming from her uh, or air coming that's over the top of this just like leaking out mm -hmm. a high pitched frequency she is so excited for this yeah yeah somehow I found the ability to pull the bathroom door open and ran as fast as I could all the way down the steps snagging my keys and phone from the table in the living room before running outside to my car I could hear her shrill laughter behind me but I didn't hear her getting closer I didn't bother shutting the front door drove away from the house faster than I legally should have, shivering the entire time, either from fear or the cold. Maybe a little of both. I hadn't grabbed a coat or even a pair of shoes. I was still in my boxers and my hair was still damp. I drove straight to my brother Chris's house about 40 minutes away, ignoring any and every call and text I got. I didn't check my phone until I was safely parked in my brother's driveway. Lynn had called four times and sent a flurry of text, all wondering where I'd gone and why I left, quote, like that. I'm reading that she's sending these texts as well. Like, I'm just picturing her smiling, looking at her phone. Yeah. Like, I think left like that, I think it's much more malicious. Or it's like, you know, like almost like mocking, antagonizing. Yeah, yeah. it's like, oh, why'd you leave like that? Oh, you scared? Mm -hmm. Oh, are you a scaredy boy? Like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why'd you leave like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like there's a there's like a, a like a high school mockery to it almost. Yeah, I threw my phone at the dash in rage, furious at her nonchalant attitude. My brother and his wife were surprised to see me, especially dressed in just a pair of boxers, but told me to stay as long as I needed. Chris lit me some clothes and asked me what happened. I told him Lynn and I had a fight, but didn't get into the details. I didn't want him to think I was overreacting, leaving my wife over a prank, even if it was a strange one. I mean, hadn't I encouraged her for years to lighten up instead of being so serious all the time? I'd wanted her to relax and loosen up, but this was definitely not what I'd had in mind. That That is a hard situation to get anyone else to understand. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like your your friend comes over. He's like, well, she she peeked at me. <laughs> she, she, but yeah, she was really excited about it. Well, I think it's just it's just it's insane. I mean, like yeah. you probably feel like you're going absolutely crazy. Yeah, I mean, like, how do you reason that through? I mean, even to himself, he's like, he understands that this is an absurd situation. But it's it's how long it's gone on and her, like, unreasonableness afterwards that's got him so... I'd, I'd understand being mad, you know? Yeah, and being in a relationship, too, I think that there's a lot of, like, give and take, especially whenever you've been in a, within a relationship so long that's just, like... I don't know, like the amount of guilt you must feel as well, or like yeah. just to be like, what, what am I doing? I'm overreacting. Like you would be lying, you, you would be dancing circles around your head trying to make sense of all this. Yeah, yeah. I tried to sleep on their sofa, but my brain wouldn't let me sleep. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw Lynn's face staring at me from inside the closet. Knowing she'd been in there with me the entire time made my skin crawl. She never left the bathroom at all. Said she flipped inside the closet and slammed the bathroom door shut to fool me. 
The mere thought of going back home gave me anxiety. I tossed and turned, unable to sleep. Chris ended up giving me a sleeping pill, so I was able to get a little rest. My sleep was filled with terrible dreams. All of Lynn's smiling face. Do you think this could be some kind of creature that is uh like feeding off of fear almost could be could be like uh like a mimic of sorts that's kind of like it's like relishing in the idea of just watching him be afraid yeah it could you be know, like a, a parasite there, type you know? thing you know yeah that's what i mean the question would be if it just looks like his wife and it killed her or maybe it's kind of like a possession thing like it controls his wife you know yeah, I'm almost wondering if it's something that gets passed on as well, like an It Follows deal. Yeah, yeah. Of like, is, did something similar happen that maybe she didn't talk to her husband about, uh-huh. and then before he even knew, she was gone, and this thing had replaced her? It does. So if I think of it as just like a woman, like when I picture the story in my head, it's it's more Horrifying. viscerally scary, you know? Like, yeah. a, like a stranger, like making that face and like smiling and being so happy. But when I picture my wife, it's more so like... I'm, it's just annoyance, you know, I guess. It's annoyance, but to me, it's even worse because you you can... It's it, much easier whenever it's a stranger because you've never perceived that person any other way probably yeah. besides this. Yeah. So when it's someone that you know, one, my immediate thing is you feel guilt and you're also like, is are you okay? But yeah, then you are yeah. annoyed because you're like, I'm trying, I'm like trying to help you, but at the same time, I feel like I want to leave and I feel guilty. Like there's so many different kinds of, I think, emotions that go into it. It's yeah, it's a weird emotion. You know, it's almost like, have you ever tried to like reason with someone who's high? Yeah, where yeah, it's yeah, like I know what you mean. Yeah, where you're Someone's like, like no, too like, wasted kind of come thing. on, talk to me, talk, and they like you know they're in there, but you can't get through to them. So you're trying to figure out mm-hmm. how to phrase yourself to get through to them. You know, like right. It's it's yeah. It's like there's a veil almost. It's kind of it's creepy in that way. Yeah. I woke up just as the sun started to rise. My sore body ached from the sofa, and I felt drained. I knew I'd have to call in at some point, but I didn't know what to say to her. I wouldn't be going home unless she gave me her word she'd never do any more creepy shit. I just wanted my wife back. Her normal, serious self never looked so good to me. I was contemplating calling her and telling her that when that familiar feeling came over me. (laughs) I was being watched. I was staring at the ceiling, my heart in my throat. Didn't want to look away, but the longer I ignored the feeling, the worse it got. My eyes drifted away from the ceiling almost on their own. (laughs) her face was pressed up against the window beside the couch oh man (laughs) staring down at me with that same gaping smile bro oh gosh it followed him all the way there (laughs) drool dribbled down her lips leaving two long streaks down the glass I didn't know how long she'd been there but something told me she'd been there for quite a while possibly all night bro <laughs> if, if that's the ca- if that's the case then too i think that you were right to assume that's something paranormal or yeah so, i mean how else would it know yeah of course where you were at it, it knows where he went it, it was a 40 minute drive and it got there you know yeah unless it I mean, stowed away in the car with him how could it do that uh, if not paranormal y- y- exactly which that's another terrifying fact that it was in the car with him the whole time if, well yeah if it, that keeps was moving, it keeps moving it keeps it keeps moving and like plotting how it's going to like follow and watch him yeah and it's just interesting i didn't bother screaming though i was afraid anger trumped any fear i felt at that moment i jumped up from the couch and pounded my palm against the glass lynn are you crazy what the hell is wrong with you just go home now she didn't move and her ghastly expression never changed if anything her smile only grew as if she had never been more elated I could hear Chris and his wife moving around upstairs. As if Lynn could hear them from her place outside, her head twitched slightly in their direction and she began to close her mouth slowly. Chris called my name from upstairs, obviously concerned. I turned to see him and his wife Rebecca hurrying down the steps. When I turned back to the window, Lynn was gone. The only sign she'd been there at all was the two streaks of drool still dripping down the glass. I tried explaining to Chris and Rebecca about waking up and seeing Lynn watching me through their window. They were skeptical. Who wouldn't be? That's that's a nice setup. Not to interrupt you. Um, that's a nice setup too because Chris did give um, our protagonist uh, some like sleeping pills sleeping before pill. too. Yep. So who knows? I mean, it's still we don't know. I mean, it could still be a hallucination of some kind. Could be. Chris and I went outside to the spot in front of the window, but there were no footprints in the dirt. Just a slight indent. Animal, probably. Chris guessed, and I didn't argue. 
He and Rebecca assumed I dropped the entire episode, but they didn't understand, and I was too tired to explain it to them. I called out of work that day and turned my cell off. I didn't want to face Lynn. Just talking to her was too much for me at that point. I really started to believe something was irreversibly wrong with her, that no matter what promises she made, we'd never be the same again. The thought saddened me to my core. I cried most of the morning. By noon, I figured I was ready to confront her, give her one last chance to explain herself. I could at least give her that after six years, I told myself. I turned my phone on and saw the dozens of texts she'd sent, all from a seemingly concerned wife. Can we talk? I love you. Please call me. I'm really worried. Can you answer? Just come home. And more of the same. All texts telling me she loved me and she wanted me home. How worried she was. Not a damn one addressing the crazy shit she pulled, like she hadn't been acting like a character from a Stephen King book. I'll also mention those texts are very vapid um, and just like generic, you know? Well, to, yeah, and to end with just come home, I mean, it, it feels like bait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does, it does feel like swinging the uh, carrot on a stick, sort of, right? Definitely, yeah. Even her texts were different. She normally texts in novels just to tell me to pick up a loaf of bread. You'd think she'd have more to say after her bizarre shenanigans. That's what I mean, right? Like, normally, like, your, your person will text you more detail or something more specific than just, I love you. Please call me, you know? Well, yeah. It's, it's, mm. it's very skinwalker esque. Mm hmm. I know it probably seems childish to some of you who are miles away from this situation, but if you saw the way Lynn had looked at me, how she scampered away on all fours like some wild animal, grinning at me from inside the closet like a lunatic, then I think you'd find my reaction was warranted. Yeah, I get it, bro. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm fully there with you. I, look, I was. I would have said grounds for divorce after the the crawling away on all fours. Everything else has just reaffirmed that point. I would have um, never spoken to this person again as soon as she got in the fucking trunk. The trunk was the last straw for me. Yeah, yeah. Like, maybe you can save the marriage after the shower thing. Maybe. Uh, but that, yeah, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. Mm. I ended up staying with Chris and Rebecca for another night. I didn't wake up yesterday until afternoon, and thankfully, I didn't see Lynn's face watching me through the window. I don't want to pry, because it's not my place, but is this fight something that can be mended? Rebecca asked. She made us both a sandwich for lunch, and I knew she wanted to breach the subject without seeming to be nosy. I, I don't know, I just... She's like a different person. I said, choosing my words carefully. I still wasn't ready for her or Chris to know the full extent of the batshit craziness I had been dealing with. People change, Ben. She's still the same woman you married. Maybe you both just need to talk through the issues. Whatever's going on, I'm sure it can be fixed. She said, ever the peacemaker. I think it's beyond that now. I don't think, I don't think talking would help. I just don't trust her. I said, the words stung in my heart. I missed and loved my wife. How could I live with someone like that? Living in constant fear didn't sound too appealing. Lynn loves you. She has to be absolutely crushed. I don't know about that. Well, she certainly seemed like it to me. I've never seen her so upset. Very much unlike the Lynn I know. She said, shaking her head sadly. It took a full minute for her words to really sink in, and when they did, I felt dread worming its way through my skin. Wait, what do you mean? You saw her? You saw Lynn? Oh, oh I didn't even register that. I yeah, I, yeah. I, I oh. took a second too. I'm like, oh, fuck, when did you see her today? Yeah. Or is she in the house? Oh, 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 oh. Like waking up, oh. like waking up, and it's like, oh, yeah, she, we invited her over for dinner Bro. or something. Oh, God. <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> Rebecca nodded casually as if the fact wasn't nightmare fuel. Maybe for her it wasn't. She stopped by this morning just after Chris left her work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've been in the house all day a safe space oh god sleeping too defenseless oh like, gosh oh. <laughs> she said cleaning the plates from the table i didn't see her car though maybe she took an uber or something <laughs> bro oh. dude he told you that she was outside the, the door and chris was like oh, i bet it's like a deer well i mean realistically how, I come to your house and I'm like, yeah, dude, Kayla, she was pressed up against the glass this morning. Oh, sure. Sure. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. 
let's say that happens, right? I, you, you say that to me. I say this to my wife. Yeah, I don't know. I think Isaiah, I think he's still a bit loopy. He said he saw uh, Kayla come up. Yeah. And my, my wife would be like, oh, I, yeah, he's probably just, you know, still sure, yeah. da- dozing off. And then if if, if Kayla did, was like, hey, can I come in? And I'd be like, where's the your next car? Day. Like, the next like, day. The next day, I feel like, okay, okay, it's the next day. You're right, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay, you're right. Which does give it some level of like, okay, forget about that. Oh, here she is. A little bit They're of belief, fight. sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I would still be, yeah, I don't know. It, 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 it puts me on edge a bit. Beck, what did she say? Did she come inside? I asked, sweat starting to break out on my forehead. I began looking around, examining corners as though a predator lurked behind them. No, she just asked if you were awake yet, and I said that you weren't. I asked if she wanted to wake you, but she said no. Just said to let you sleep. She said as she washed the dishes. That's all? She didn't say anything else? No. She looked awful, though. Like she hadn't slept in days. I think you should call her. (laughs) I got up from the table and thanked Rebecca for lunch. I felt a little bit better at the knowledge that at least she hadn't come inside. Still, I needed to double check that the doors were locked. Except for a while trying to figure out what to do next. I didn't want to go home, but I felt that I owed it to Lynn to help her if I could. And I swore an oath to love and honor her through sickness and in health. Clearly, she was very sick. And that's a good point, right? Like... True. My true. wife's had some mental snap. I want to help her if possible. Of course. You know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's not the main character's not a monster. He's just yeah. completely drained. I mean, he's he slept for basically 24 straight hours because of just probably tossing and turning thinking about this stuff. Nothing supernatural has happened in the story, right? Like we're theorizing what it might be, but it's I like the mention of like I need to make sure the doors are locked because yeah, that probably would keep her out because we haven't seen anything so far like oh she can like yeah you know, crawl, phase through a door or something like that, Well, right? he's, he's scratching He's scratching for any kind of security at this yeah, moment. Yeah, He has a re- completely restless mind. Yeah, man, I'm so locked in. This is great. Yeah. You know what, audience? You're you're all right for now. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like two paragraphs later. It's going to be like, there's a seven-year-old boy, and he's like, have you seen yeah. Tommy Taffy? And then Rebecca like, brought yeah. out her cousin, her <laughs> nine-year-old cousin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go to see the skinned men. Like, just, yay! <laughs> oh, is that a guy? Yeah, Rebecca shows up in a bear suit. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, okay. All right, I see. I see what happened here. <laughs> <laughs> if she was sick, which I truly believe she was, I had to try and get her the help she needed. But I didn't even know where to start. I didn't want to call the police. And besides, what the hell is I going to tell them? That my wife was peeking at me. She was being creepy. As bizarre as she'd been, she still hadn't committed any crime. Not yet, anyway. The police would have probably said that I was overreacting, but this wasn't some prank. It felt wrong. Dangerous, even. Like something sinister lurked beneath her smile. I knew as her husband, I was well within my rights to have her committed, but what if... (laughs) That's a funny way of phrasing that line. (laughs) Very 1950s. That's what I was saying. She's hysterical. I know that when a woman begins to lose her mind, it's only right that she be put into a ward, as anyone... (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, as any normal woman would. As any respectful, God-fearing husband would, and then sleep with his secretary to take the pain off of his mind. You know, as God intended. In the Bible, as my pastor said. (laughs) But what if she simply acted normal in their presence? She'd obviously been able to fool Rebecca into thinking she was just a concerned wife. As long as the doctors didn't find her a danger to herself or others, they'd have no choice but to release her after 72 hours. I felt lost and overwhelmed. I will say, um, if this story was set in the 1950s, would have been two paragraphs long. My wife leaned around a corner, so I shot her. Anyway. Yeah. (laughs) So I... So I choked her out and threw her in the lake. That'll teach her for burning the roast. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> when she, now she'll stop crying so much around the house. Maybe if she I wasn't my, a pagan, this wouldn't have happened. Yeah, oh, she well. was, she's, she is Catholic. So what do you do? God bless you, FDR. <laughs> <laughs> so I did what any husband in my position would do. I called her mother. <laughs> that's That's a funny that's a funny line i didn't want to believe me her mother marianne and i were never on the best of terms we never fought or anything like that 
She just wasn't a very warm person and it wasn't really easy to get along with. She hardly ever smiled and when she did, only her lips would move into a thin lip smile, leaving her eyes as blank as before. She gave off this aura that felt like she was permanently on the offensive. I'd only ever met her twice and both times were for such short visits. I got the impression she didn't approve of me for her daughter. Lynn always ushered us out quickly and she didn't want me to feel uncomfortable, which I was grateful for. Being in her mother's company felt almost unbearable, like walking on glass. I was glad when we moved three states away so we didn't have to see her often. I was happy to avoid the woman. I needed her help. I really didn't want to talk to her at all, but I had to talk to someone and someone who knew Lynn better than I did. So I gripped my teeth and did what I had to. Yes? She answered, already sounding irritated. Marianne, it's me, Ben. Do you have a minute to talk? I asked. I could hear her cluck her tongue in irritation. I'm in the middle of writing some checks, but if you insist, I suppose I can spare a moment. What is it that you want to discuss, Benjamin? She said, coolly. It's about Lynn. She's been acting strangely, and I was wondering if you had any idea whether there was something... I, I was quickly interrupted. It's a bit difficult to follow your rambling, Benjamin. What is that you want from me? She asked. I could almost see her standing there with her thin sweater and slacks, tapping her fingernails impatiently on the table. I wanted to know if you've noticed any odd behavior or possibly any mental health issues. There was a long, uncomfortable pause that I couldn't tell was because she was just thinking or something else. Finally, after a few seconds, she spoke. I'm not sure if this is one of your jokes, Benjamin. But if so, I don't find the humor in it. Now, I do have business to attend to, as I've said, so if you don't mind... She said, but I cut her off before she could get rid of me. Marianne, it's not a joke. I, I'm sincerely concerned about Lynn's mental health. Her behavior has been very erratic lately, and I'm very worried about her. And I figured, as her mother, you would be as well. I said, the frustration evident in my voice. If you're truly concerned, then I suggest you get the health professionals involved. I don't know what you expect of me. She snapped. I could tell she was seconds away from hanging up, and for some reason I was desperate not to let her. I had the feeling that she knew a lot more than she was letting on. Please, if not for me, do it for Lynn. I heard a faint, shaky intake of breath, as if she were trying to hold her steeply persona together, but failing. Marion, what's... Benjamin, I don't know what to tell you. My only advice would be to seek professional help. Do not call here again. Goodbye. I tried to call out to her, but she'd hung up. I tried to wrap my head around the call and her refusal to help me. Even if she didn't like me, why wouldn't she want to help her own daughter? I couldn't understand that. I tried to replay the conversation, desperate to find something I missed. After a while, I almost gave up, till I remembered her last words to me. Seek professional help. She said those words with a bit of urgency. I could have just been grasping at straws, but no, I, I was sure her voice had changed ever so slightly when she said that, as if they were very important. What had she meant? I assumed she'd been referring to medical professionals, but maybe she was referring to someone else. Someone that she didn't, for some reason, feel comfortable saying directly. Or may maybe I was just desperate. Well, I feel like the mom has seen this out of Lynn before, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And maybe that's why she had all of the animosity towards Benjamin, like when they were dating and stuff like that, because she didn't want Benjamin to go through it, perhaps? Yeah, I'm thinking that that and because Lynn, they've been married six years, or they've been together six years and yeah. married for 11 months. Yeah. And he's only seen her mom twice, and now they leave, live three states away. What I'm wondering is, is Lynn keeping him from her shady past or her past self to where he didn't want, she doesn't want him to be around, Benjamin to be around the, uh, Marianne, because Marianne might be like, hey, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. Uh -huh. Or maybe like, maybe she has something that comes out, you know, once every 10 years or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I waited for Chris to get home. And after a very long and exhausting conversation with him and Rebecca, I convinced him that Lynn truly needed psychiatric help. I didn't tell them everything. I wasn't prepared to go into it yet, but I told them about our last encounter. How she hidden in the bathroom, peeking at me from the closet. 
They were obviously shocked, but thankfully they believed me. They too just wanted to help her. Still, they didn't think it was all that serious. Weird, maybe, but not dangerous. They just kept saying that Lynn had to be playing some kind of weird joke. Maybe for YouTube? <laughs> everywhere you look, everywhere. Yeah. She's actually a very prolific YouTuber called Lenny Boo 755 She's a cam girl, Benjamin. She's really into this thing called Creepcast, and she figured if she acted strange enough, maybe you'd put it on r slash no sleep. <laughs> Sorry. Chris didn't think we should involve the police just yet. He offered instead to go with me, and I readily accepted. He reasoned that calmly talking to her, trying to coax her into going willingly, was the best recourse. I agreed to do it his way. At least I wouldn't be going to that house alone. We drove over this morning, just after breakfast. There was no way I was going at night. When we pulled into the driveway, my stomach began doing somersaults. Her car wasn't there, but I still didn't let my guard down. The front door was ajar, and for a split second, I thought we'd seen her eyes staring through the gap. I was shaking and starting to sweat. Chris, however, was fine. He waited for me to open the door, his hands in his pockets, like he was going on a stroll through the park. I envied his ignorance. I pushed the door open and was immediately hit with the stench of rot. Chris smelled it too, and he walked in the house behind me with his nose scrunched up. What do you guys use to clean the floors around here? Shit? Shut up. I said, my eyes darting around for any signs of Lynn. The house was deadly quiet and dark despite being 10 in the morning. All the curtains were closed up tight, using to allow any sunlight inside. If I haven't left it just two days prior, I'd have thought the house to be abandoned. I moved through each room, carefully checking any place she might hide, occasionally calling her name. Why the fuck are you looking under the couch? Are we looking for your wife? He was looking at me like I was a moron. Let's just go upstairs. He shook his head but followed me up the stairs to check the bathroom and spare bedroom. On the way up, my shoes crunched over pieces of glass that looked to be littered over a few of the steps. I noticed that one of Lynn and my wedding portraits that hung on the wall along the staircase had been smashed. The frame hung crookedly, all the glass removed. I stared at the picture, a lump forming in my throat. We had taken the photo just after leaving the church, after saying our vows. She looked so beautiful in her white gown. I looked at Lynn's beautiful face. I never dreamed her face would ever be a source of terror for me. We climbed the rest of the steps and checked the spare bedroom, but it looked completely untouched. I was hesitant to go into the bathroom, my fear from that night coming back to me all at once. Chris noticed and offered to go in by himself, but I couldn't let him do that. So, we walked in together, checking the closet and the shower. The bathroom looked as if it hadn't been touched since the night I left. I don't think she's here, Ben. Why don't you pack some clothes and we'll try coming back tomorrow or something? Chris said. I nodded and went into our bedroom and shoved some clothes into a duffel bag. When I checked inside our closet, I came across the source of the smell and gagged. Chris took one look and lost all color in his face. He had to go stand by the stairs to get away from the sight and smell. I gazed down in shock at what lay inside my bedroom closet. Soaking into the rug were at least a dozen eyeballs, all carefully laid out in pairs. Some were as large as a quarter, while others were as tiny as a marble. I stared down at the eyes she collected from the small animals and wondered how she got them. Shuddered at the thought. Man, I thought I had it bad with Becca's shoe addiction, but fuck me. Your wife's in here collecting eyeballs. Ben, I, I think we should go. I'm getting nauseous. I, I, would, I would punch him in the face. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're, yeah, I, did, I, thought my, I thought my broad was bad with all of her weird shoes. Hey, man. The shoes is legitimately a lunatic. I'm getting the hell out of here. It smells like baby diapers and shit. Hey, pal, at least, the, at least these are less expensive, am I right? You can get eyeballs in the backyard. Ain't got to spend the hey, check on least, the missus, the old ball and chain, hey, you hear? Yeah, yeah, you're lucky, pal, all right? Yeah, at least your I wish mine had eyeballs. Right? Get some Febreze, clear that right up.
Yeah, I guess in Febreze, you can't go to you can't you can't go to prison for tackling the the neighborhood dog and ripping out his eyeballs. You'll be just fine. But you know, you know what? You can't get over that price from Payless Shoes. That that receipt she brings home. Am I right? Put her put her there. Up yeah, I, 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 you, the one thing you can't get over is a Balenciaga receipt. Yeah, yeah. Right? I tell you what, you think you think eyeballs are bad? How about some eye Balenciaga on a receipt? You hear? Yeah. I tell you what. All right. I grabbed my duffel and shut the closet door on my new nightmare. I stepped out into the hall and took a deep breath of air. I could taste the rot on my tongue and I couldn't help but gag. Who the fuck lines up eyeballs in their closet like that? I tried to tell you she needed help. She doesn't need help. She needs a fucking exorcist. You coming or what? I can't stand the smell any- His words died in his throat and his eyes grew wide with fear. I didn't ask him why. I could feel it. Someone was watching me, and I didn't think it was the eyes in the closet. I turned around, my eyes slowly scanning the bedroom. Christ. I whispered as I finally saw what we'd missed. Under the bed, curled on her side, watching us with the excitement of a kid on Christmas morning, was my wife. She held her hands together just under her chin, and they were shaking eagerly. Now that she knew she'd been found... I could hear the quiet noises she was making. A sort of hiccuping sound in her throat, as if the excitement was just too much for her. It was unnerving to say the least. Wide eyes and that same huge smile. Everything in me told me to run, but I forced it anyway. This was my wife. No matter how twisted, she was still the woman I married. I had to help her. Lynn. She didn't respond but her head bobbed back and forth in two quick little movements as if she were nodding. Baby, I just want to help, okay? C can you let me do that? I'd taken a single step forward, approaching her like some kind of dangerous animal. I love you, Lynn. I said softly, taking another step closer. She let a tiny moan escape her wide open mouth and I had to resist the urge to run. Her shoulders were starting to quiver and her eyes grew as large as saucers. Crouched down so I could see her better, and immediately saw the blood. Her hands were covered in it. It trembled more the closer I got, as if she were barely able to contain herself. Lynn, are you hurt? You're bleeding. I said. She bobbed her head again, and her bloody fingers moving up and down as if playing an invisible piano, and occasionally grazed her chin, leaving smears of blood on her skin. I wanted to recoil in disgust. The smell that was coming off of her was revolting. I could feel the vomit trying to climb up my throat. Her lips were dry and stretched thin, blood seeping between the cracks. I knew she wouldn't come out on her own, but I didn't want to leave her in the state she was in. I scooted closer and reached out to her. The excited hiccuping sounds got louder and her hands shook, fingers flexing. It was then that I could see the blood oozing from in between her fingers. Oh my god, Lynn. You're bleeding. Instinctively, I reached out to take her hand, but before I could even touch her, her hand sprang out towards me. Sharp pain shot through my arm and I fell back on my ass. My arm burned and I could see the blood dripping down onto the carpet. I looked back at her in shock and saw her grinning madly, her fingers clutching a large shard of glass. You all right in there? <laughs> <laughs> I hate Chris. I hate Chris so much. He's like taking all of the wind out of this really good story. It's so fucking annoying. Hey, I know I saw those eyeballs and you've been like, you saw your dead wife or something with blood. You okay? I thought those shoes were bad, buddy. Anyway, let's get yo. Oh, man. Anyway, you all right in there? I thought the BOGO wings we got at Buffalo Wild Wings were bad, but you, she looks crazy. Um, She's right behind you, isn't she? <laughs> Uh, Benjamin, she's right behind you, isn't she? It's like, Chris, you can see. You would know that You're question. looking at me. You are looking at yeah. me right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, she's behind you. Uh, um, um, Ben, you're going to want to see this. <laughs> I turned my head slightly, nodded to him, cradling my arm to my chest. When I turned back to face Lynn, I saw that her focus had shifted. She wasn't looking at me anymore. She wasn't smiling anymore either. She was staring past me, 
Her eyes glaring at Chris the way a hungry lion might stare at an antelope. Her mouth was still hanging open, but it was twisted into a snarl. I got on my feet and began walking backwards down the hall, afraid to take my eyes off her. Are you bleeding? Chris asked. The moment the words left his mouth, Lynn started fast, scooting out from under the bed, the glass shard still in her fist. Oh my gosh. Chris, run, go! I yelled. He must have been too afraid to move because a second later, I felt my back bump into him. He was still standing at the top of the stairs, staring at the horror that was my wife. Lynn had crawled completely out from under the bed and stood in the bedroom doorway, her face twisted in rage. Her whole body was visibly tense. Blood ran down her fingers and onto the floor. Jesus, Lynn! You... You playing hide-and-seek? <laughs> I've... God damn it, Chris! God. <laughs> Bro. God Bro. damn it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jesus, Lynn. You uh, played hide and seek? <laughs> uh. she, just, she just stabbed oh. her husband. Yeah. <laughs> what, what the hell you doing? <laughs> what is this, Operation? Whoa, don't go. Hey, look, it must be that time of the month or something going a little crazy. You hey, know? you bloody. For what reason? Hey, <laughs> hey, pal. Don't we all got them? Oh, I see some blood on her hands. I know what that means. Hey, they all get a little wacky. <laughs> they all get a little eyeball. You know what I mean? I hope Chris gets skinned alive here. He also, I want to say before uh, before Chris completely ruins this story for me. It does, if if she is looking at everybody else as a threat and, like, threatening to kill their people, do you think that she uh, was, like, looking at her husband with, like, some kind of weird demented love then still? No, I think she, uh, I think, uh, so what I think happened is she's possessed. Um, okay. By something. And whatever entity it is is feeding off of Ben. Okay. Feeding off of fear. fear like, it, like I said earlier, parasite, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And other people can endanger that or basically give up the charade, right? Because what the parasite wanted was to just spend the life of feeding off of the energy, the fear, whatever, of Ben. But if someone else is there, then that ruins the charade, right? Mm hmm. So I, I think that's what it is. But although that being said, she did collect the eyeballs and then stab Ben. So maybe it's like reaching some apex, whatever this possession or like, you know, poltergeist is. I didn't know if it was just over. I just didn't know if it was overindulgence, like yeah. feeding so much that now you're like, like just a blood rage. Kind yeah. Of thing. Yeah. It might be. It might be. Uh, okay. Yeah. But locked in before Chris can ruin it. I reached back and pushed him towards the steps. Move your ass, Chris. I said as quietly, but firmly as I could. Lynn bobbed her head in fast, sharp motions and began to grin, stretching her mouth open wider and wider so that her chin seemed to touch her chest. I heard Chris mutter a prayer and then he was running down the stairs. I stood at the top of the steps, stuck between the love for a woman who clearly needed serious help and self-preservation. I only want to help, I said, choking back tears. Her eyes focused on me once again as she slowly lifted the glass, holding it out in front of her. And then she started sprinting towards me, <laughs> grinning with utter excitement, bro. <laughs> Thankfully, my body took over and I flew down the stairs, skipping two or three at a time. I made it to the front door before I felt her leap onto my back, wrapping her arms around my neck, her open mouth next to my ear so that I could hear those terrible hiccuping sounds up close. I shook her off me, knocking her to the floor. I felt a searing pain in my back as she went, but I tore open the front door and bolted to my car. Chris was standing in the front yard, talking on the phone with the police. <laughs> he's, he's on the phone like, um, she's right behind yeah. him. <laughs> I need you to deliver this as fast as a Jimmy John sub. Yep. I, I want this hot ready or else it's free. You hear? <laughs> yeah, exactly. This toots is being absolutely wild. <laughs> She's all screwy dooey. Get over here. Hey, bring bring us a, a glass of wine and a weekend vacation, if you know what I mean. The woman's going a little stir crazy over here. <laughs> all right. You're like, sir, what the hell are you even calling us for? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say a word. I just ran to my car and jumped in. Chris took the hint and followed me, still on the line with 911. I watched the rear view mirror. Sure, I'd see her there, running after us, but I never did. I went straight to the ER and got 11 stitches in my arm and three on my back. 
The police asked a lot of questions and went back to the house to do a search, but of course, Lynn wasn't there. They advised me to stay with a friend or a relative for a while and to file a restraining order as soon as I could, but none of those things would matter. Somehow I just knew. I dropped Chris off at home and went to a motel an hour away. Why on earth would you go to a motel? I don't know. Why would you go anywhere with that? Why would you drop Chris off, tell the police, and then go isolate yourself? Oh, okay. All okay. right. This is wh- where I've been for the last four hours. I thought maybe the police would find her. Maybe they'd get her the help she desperately needs. But now I don't think so. Because 40 minutes ago, I got a text from an unknown number. Just three words. I found you. And a picture attached. The picture was dark and grainy, but I instantly knew what it was. There was no mistaking my wife's eye. I started typing this out immediately after. I don't know what to do. I'm alone and scared. I can't help but feel that I'm being watched. And that's the end of the story. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. It, it kind of that's the end of the story to me. Like last ten percent kind of fumbled a bit. Uh, but well, here's I here's love some of my the thoughts. Concept. I love the concept. Yeah, I I think well, great. I mean, first I've been spooked in a while. Man, uh, that's they, got, they, that they, got they, me. That got me. It has a lot of good stuff. I wrote some questions down um, throughout that I would like to discuss with you now. Go for now, it. Now, one earlier earlier in the uh, in the story. I wrote this earlier in, and I think that the, so I wrote, does this feel more believable, more believable if they were uh, just dating for six months and not married? And I say this because, because of the back and forth of if your wife was being that way, I feel like you'd be a lot more, you'd be a lot more confrontational or you'd be more open to being like, what is hat? Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like you would, you would not let something lie versus if you were dating somebody for six months, you're like, "Eh, okay, I haven't really had a girlfriend in a while. I guess this is whatever. Like I would rather be with somebody than with nobody. You know what I mean? And I know that they have the, I know that they kept it being a marriage because it's like, well, of course you wouldn't just like leave. You wouldn't leave your wife. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But still, do you like, I mean, Uh, like, okay. I think, I think leave the marriage part, right? Because you can make it be like you just got engaged or something, right? Right. Because that puts it in a middle ground. Because the idea of the marriage thing is that it's too strong of a bond to separate. Because I feel like if they're just dating, then this would be grounds to be like, and we broke up. You know, like, uh, absolutely Well, to me, it's not. like, it's, it's more about the amount of time. I mean, six years Man, if you, being if with somebody you put it is a good like while. a two-year relationship, I think sure. that's about yeah. right. I think. Yeah. Not super long, but not like short to the point where it's like, well, I mean, I've invested this much time into this thing. There would be a thing if you were dating for like two years of like a weird middle ground of like, is she okay or something? I think I know her. Six months is like, okay, bye. But six years is like, gr- what? <laughs> what? Well, yeah, like, I feel like, yeah. I feel like you, you have so much more room. You have so much more room to actually be confrontational and be like, at, what, at like six talk to me. years in a relationship, honestly, after like four years, you're comfortable to start a fight, you know, if well, you're past it, the honeymoon stage yeah, and yeah. now you're, this is where the relationship actually begins. Yeah. And it, it, it's like, if there's an issue you're because like before it's like, if there's an issue in your head, you're like, well, I don't want to cause any problems. But after like right. four years, it's like, this needs to be fixed. Time to start a problem. You know, if, mm-hmm. if need be, and this would absolutely be caused to start a problem, you know? Yeah, no, 100%. I was uh, the, the next one I had to is um do you think was the movie Smile based off of this? How old is this story? Hold on. It's 2 years old. Mm, there's no way they turned Smile around that quick. Smile came out like a year ago, right? I th- I think I, not officially. I think I would have heard something about that, right? If it was based off of creep. No, it came out September 30th of 2022. Okay, so these came out around just like a similar time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, creepy smiling stuff is like a pretty standard tropey thing, but it was just some of the things I just I, I was there was there was know. some specific notes I think, uh, but they 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 I mean, even if they there was enough time for one to be based off the other, I think there's enough uniqueness, you know, that maybe it got conceptual. There's no way though that the movie came off of this story because that's just. That you, sure. Yeah, you can't make a film that quick. I was just curious. I mean, I don't think either or is like parasitic to yeah, either yeah, yeah. property. They're both or whatever, their own product. Yeah. 
I just wrote uh, Chris jokes sucked. <laughs> just put just made a note for that. Just because that all was them, I feel which like the one, story, every one of them sucked. I was so mad about that. What I mean that. is I think all of them, all of the jokes sucked. I feel like he was the he was the only thing that made the story feel a little not poorly written, but just like just unbelievable. Like, and then also it's like it's just not funny. And also, I just don't think you need to have that quirky character in something you like play this. Play hide and go seek or something. <laughs> Yeah, Gosh, I mean, like, oh, me. oh, here, here, here's here's another thing too. What what do you think about her collecting eyes? Does that feel so random, or is there a correlation there? Besides the aspect of staring, I really can't think of like why why eyes. Yeah, well, it's got to be a staring thing, right? Well, what it yeah, actually what I think it is is so when he how she keeps doing these elaborate pranks, kind of of like you know slamming the door so that she's standing in the closet. I bet she did it so that he opens the closet and there's things staring at him. Like the, not, mm -hmm. it's not that the eyes have a significance beyond ha ha. It's something else looking at you. And then she's super excited watching like, from under the bed. Like, ha ha made it look at you. Yeah. He puts an emphasis on the joke aspects so that could be, I almost read it at first as like, Oh, is she plucking the eyes of things that are staring back at her? I had that thought. Uh, at first, I thought it was people's eyes, and she was like a serial killer. Like, okay, animals. So yeah, it's just animals. But I think it's more than likely she like is getting a kick off of staring at him. So it's like, haha, made more things stare at you, you know? Yeah. So just having in this that, thing of like, like if it's just like, oh, she's getting to the point she's killing animals. I think that's kind of lame. But as an extension of the whole staring joke. I think it works. I think that's fine. So the thing ends and it's supposed to be that, oh, she found him and that's how it ends. Yeah. I think, is it a better ending if when they get outside, the cops have already showed up because, uh, because Chris has called the cops They show up and she's holding the knife and she's charging at Ben. She gets shot. Boom. Mm -hmm. So you don't even know what was going on with her. You're just like, what the fuck even happened mm -hmm. when they, when they go back and they're figuring out what stuff going on or Rebecca shows up to pick it up. It's like Chris hugs Rebecca, whatever. And then as Benjamin looks up, Rebecca smiling because, <laughs> That'd be because Lynn had that moment with her alone as well. So it's like passed on. It, Do you yeah, think that would have been on. a funner thing to where you were like, I don't know how that ended It's inexplicable, but it doesn't end where it's just like, Oh, she's still out there more. So the thing has been passed on. Or this thing is like, a, it's larger than her. Give me a second. I think, okay, I'm not, the ending's fine. It's like the standard creepypasta ending, the, the ending in the story. Right. It's like your, Sa it, the same as the dead girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your much. typical like, oh, it's still out there. It's going to <laughs> come get me, you know, whatever. Um, even if I think it's a bit contrived that he would make himself alone in the hotel. Like, no, he wouldn't, you know? Um, yeah, but it it kind of forces to get the whole like, oh, she sent me a picture of her eyes. She's still out there sending a picture of the eyes kind of goofy too. Um, like I, I can't imagine a demon like holding the iPhone camera up to their eye and then like waiting for it to focus and then being like, all it right, kind of read like and then send, it kind of and read like something so it gets data for the, OK, <laughs> like you know, it, it, it reminded me almost like um, the ending to like a Junji Ito comic in that absurdist um kind of Japanese manga storytelling kind of way, which I, I kind of liked, but I, I just feel like it's not the strongest ending. I also think that an, my another general complaint I maybe had is I feel like don't include the mom section of the story. It doesn't really lead anywhere. And I don't think it like, I don't think the the, the, the carrot that you're dangling with the story of like, oh, mm -hmm. she knows something that we don't know. I don't know if that really leads anywhere. And I think it also just takes away from what this entity is, I, which at the end of the day, I think it's strongest when you don't know. It, yeah, it, the strongest element of the story was someone you love developing this insane joke, basically. Yeah. Uh, and the mother element almost explicitly said it was like demonic. Right. Like, yeah, a professional, you know, that whole thing. Um, yeah. So if it had gone somewhere, it probably would have been fine. But as it stands, it kind of just it gives you an out. Right. Like, oh, it's a demon, you know, and that's. Yeah, I don't want to feel satisfied with a creature in the way of like, oh, I've I've figured it out because the scariest well, especially part is the like it's unexplainable. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. If it's unexplainable, and especially if the format of the story that you're telling is through this social media post, I think it's better if you don't have these things where it's like, well, I better go see her mom. 
or something. I feel like it just needs to be more self-contained in that way to feel like this post is coming or whatever. And you can have this guy reaching out because he's just like, I just don't know what's going on. And I feel like it's just more contained to his personal experience and he hasn't like gone out and done these things. It, it, it isn't totally unbelievable. It's just my personal preference. So I just, I guess I just wanted to say that too. I think it's just my personal preference. Okay. But. I think, I think this would be a better ending. I, I, this is very pretentious of me, by the way, to be like, oh, I think what would be a better, but I think something that would maybe follow through on the bet, in my opinion, the best parts of the story would be if he goes over to her right at there at the house and you can have the eye part. I think the eye part kind of works, right? Um, if you do it this way. So the eyes are there to be like, haha, it's staring at you. Uh, you could even up the stakes a bit if you wanted. Maybe there's like dozens of pairs of eyes, right? And she's like standing in the corner all excited. And then mm. he gives his whole like, Lynn, I want to help you or whatever. And then you don't have the kind of horror movie ending where she chases him and like is running and stabs him. Because then it's just like every other horror movie creature, right? Sure. What if instead she's just standing there like mouth open, excited and he's like, come, come with me. And she, what if she's like still like smiling and excited? And she's like, did you see my joke? Did you see my prank? Did you like it? Are you scared? Are you scared? Did you like being scared? And he was like, yeah, yeah, honey. It, it was really good. You got me good. And like, do you, th do you think that works too? Is at the beginning? It's like, because I see what you're saying. You have like, that's pretty demented and just fucking like mentally weird. Uh -huh. You know, like I, I like that, like kind of psychological ending. Uh -huh. Do you think that it all starts off with then of them, him, of him pranking her at the beginning? He's like, it was a helpless prank. And like, that's the thing that triggered this like response. All, her, like, I don't kind of know mentally because devolve. that almost makes it too defined of like, right. oh, well, she just snapped on it. I think it makes it a bit scarier if she just started doing this and you don't know why. Like, there's not mm. really an explanation. And then she's like, did you see it? Did you like it? Because the one thing she says is like, maybe I've gotten better at it. So maybe there at the end, she says something like, I'm really good at this. Or like, I've gotten really good at this. And he's like, yeah, babe, you are. You know, I love you. And then he takes her to be committed. And she goes into like, um, she goes into a mental health facility and he was like, I go to visit, but uh, she won't really talk to me. Um, the doctors have told me not to bring up what has anything specific about the peaking or whatever, because they're afraid that might agitate her. So I try to small talk with her about life and stuff like that, but it doesn't really go anywhere. Um, yeah, when I visit her, she just sits under the table and peeks at me from up under the yeah, like she, table like or something. It's not getting better. Like it, yeah, it's it, just getting worse. It's, it's the just total getting deterioration. Worse. But th there's no abject danger to it. It's just the unknowingness of why can't my wife be helped? You know, what's yeah, going it's on? The uncanny nature of like this mental deterioration, which I think too is just unbelievably horrifying as well. I'm curious what people have to say, like what people think of the ending and what people have maybe, you know, do you agree with what we're saying? Do you like the ending and how it is? I'm kind of curious to <laughs> from, see what people say. From there, there's a few ways you could end it. You could end it with just him writing about what happened. It's like this was a weird scenario. You could have her die maybe somehow in the mental health facility. Like, you know, she does it herself or something like that. Uh, you could have her if you really want to have a monster and then you could have her escape or something and you don't know where she's at. You could you could have like a little ending where uh, he has some like n normal interaction with a person in public, maybe another relationship, maybe uh just someone in public who he thinks was maybe peeking at him, but it could also just be a normal scenario, you know, but he's so paranoid now he can't trust anyone, something like that. Um, I think the best way to end it would be Benjamin uh, in a fit of rage uh, in a rainy night shows up at Chris Jones's house or Chris, Chris's house and just shoots him three times in the chest. <laughs> and that's how it ends. <laughs> 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 uh, Chris opens the door and, he, and like you're like oh this is horrible I mean he's not really going to do this is he but then Chris the first thing Chris says is cowabunga with a question mark which doesn't even make sense and then Benjamin's just like god get and just boom, boom, unloads boom, the shotgun right. directly into his face yeah boom and then Rebecca oh, just smiles and, oh. then that's, and that's how the curse gets transferred over yeah. you could have an ending okay so imagine okay let's rewind a bit he takes her to the mental health facility and then he was like that was yesterday so we, she's still in the health facility whatever he was like, I drove over to talk to Chris about it tonight, and I noticed Rebecca was looking at him from the uh, from the bedroom window. 
Yeah. Or something like I think like that, I think yeah. having it pass on to Rebecca after she, after we have that thing where Lynn has talked to Rebecca yeah, since yeah. he was sleeping. Like something happened there. I think it just sets it up mm -hmm. for a great continuation of it. And like or even like not continuation but like oh In your mind, it's passed on like, in some oh, way. And this, this where did it go? Yeah, yeah, and somebody must have had this interaction with Lynn as well. I think that's just like a fun way to go about it too, yeah. but and, I'm curious what people and, think. That's not to say that this is bad. By any no, means. no, I, I, I definitely. Like I, I think. I, I think the verbiage of this would be a better ending is probably not correct. Yeah, I think yeah. it's not, just not that be a better a, a food, I guess how thought. I would have written it, which isn't yeah, is I, by no means a like perfect. I'm not the arbiter of good writing by any means. Of course, I think it. I think it worked well. Um, I love. I had a this, great time. I, with the story. I did have a great time. I thought that one line was insanely good. Uh, maybe I've just gotten better at it. Yeah, that was so good. I thought the I think, whole bathroom section was fantastic. That was great. Yeah, the the bathroom is definitely the highlight. The the beautiful tension race from there, mm -hmm. and just like the kind of anticipation of waiting. I think that that was all really done really well. I also just liked Benjamin too as a main character. Yeah, yeah I, I, thought I, I liked him. I think that like I, I think I, he did everything. Yeah. like in a believable, good way. I just felt bad for him. I think that like yeah, as I, a I, yeah yeah I as a protagonist in a horror him. story, I don't think you could be much better. So yeah. I don't know. Curious what y'all think. Let, let us know what you think down below and be sure to, uh, yeah, I guess just keep the suggestions. This is a good suggestion. This was a good suggestion. You know what? You guys did good this time. So that is one, four, five, I think. How many have they, how many have they yeah. suggested? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't hold it against them. I, I like I, Tommy I'm Taffy. Okay. So that one, <laughs> like that. I'm not going to, I am not even going to bring up the word again. I don't want us to be crucified. I anymore. am I'm going on. to, I, I have access to this channel. So I am going to make an entire uh, Tommy Taffy like parts three and four episode with yeah, you in it. Yeah, it's going to be basically fan fiction the same way that like FNAF gets fan fiction. Yeah, yeah. It's just me, you and Tommy Taffy. Yeah, it's yeah gonna, I'm sure it's people would be love us, that. And it's going to be Hunter like. It's going to be like <laughs> at the ending. It's like I've I've got like a cigar in my mouth and I'm like out of ammo and there's hundreds of Tommy Taffies and Hunter's like laid on my feet in like a white dress like Isaiah what are we going to do and I'm like we're going to keep killing or whatever and that's how it ends yeah yeah the first video of mine is going to be the rise and fall of Windigun okay yeah that's cool and then I'm going to have that I'm going to have that I'm, I'm going to make essay. a video that's actually talking about how if we analyze Meat Canyon's cartoon history we can actually see a history of um alt right supremacism throughout his works and these uh yeah. these tones you team up uses. with the guy who did who made the video on you <laughs> to, 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 to make it on me <laughs> <laughs> it's both of us standing in front of a green yeah. screen yeah i'm like what the hell is i like dude what are you doing the enemy of my enemy is my friend yeah. <laughs> the enemy of my enemy is my friend exactly that, that's the first line <laughs> that's the first line in quotes by some guy i'm, I I'm in that. like we're both in priest garb <laughs> like we we have to stop him <laughs> 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 All right. Well, I think that does it for our episode today. It was a wonderful one. I appreciate you guys. Also, once again, be sure to check the description and the link below probably for the merch, um, the merch drop that we're doing. I believe it is actually limited. I can't remember the days, but two weeks. it'll say on it. I think it's like two. Yeah, weeks two weeks. Like it'll that. say on the website too. So yeah, link, it, it should be up there. Link in the but description. Feel free to pick one up if you want. Get the hat mm -hmm. and the shirt, not to support Hunter, but to support me. And I appreciate it. So That's right. Yeah. And I will say the, uh, don't support me. Support Windagoon on this. Yeah. I swear I don't get anything from it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think uh, also I just want to say thank you guys again. I know uh, Isaiah brought it up at the beginning, but thank you for checking out Creep TV. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a fun um, continuation onto what we're doing here. And uh, as always, we appreciate the amazing, amazing support on everything we've been doing. So thank you all. I just appreciate you. Appreciate you all very much. Thank you for all the support. It means the world. Continue to show love on audio platforms and stuff like that. It means a lot. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you for everything. Stay scared, you fucking creeps. Stay, we'll see you in the stay, next one. Stay creeped, you scares. Stay <laughs> creeps. Stay, you scares. Stay. Okay. Yeah, bye. And Winnegan died of an aneurysm right there. You, you wish. <laughs> <laughs> bye, everyone.
Thank you, Scentbird, for sponsoring the video, and be sure to check out the links below.